This video is going to be a film study look at Roquan Smith and how he performed in the Ravens' Week 12 win over the Chargers. He had a quiet game for his standards from a statistical standpoint. Only eight tackles and 66 snaps. Played 100% of the snaps once again, by the way. But I think it's a perfect example or opportunity to point out that it's never that simple. It's never as simple as just what do the raw stats look like. I mean, they give us an indication, sure, of how someone played. He had one pass defense, a beautiful play against Quentin Johnston over the middle in coverage. He had a forced fumble on Keenan Allen that he gets credit for. I think him and Clowney are both there. Two ridiculously swift run stops for the season. 126 tackles, one and a half sacks. He's not really used as a blitzer a ton. I reject the notion that an inside linebacker has to generate six or eight sacks a season in order to justify their salary. You know, there's a lot of things that he does that show up in the statistical categories. And then there's some things that him and other players do that don't. For example, some of our sacks. I, I reject the notion that every single sack is either this stark coverage sack or it's an organic win by our D lineman. They're, it's like a Venn diagram, if you ask me, where they overlap. And Roquan Smith, Patrick Queen, Kyle Hamilton, Arthur Millette, those guys are in the middle of that, if you ask me. They're sometimes used as a blitzer, sometimes used to simulate pressure, and sometimes they're in coverage. Quarterback is reading, can't get to an open window because of the coverage by those guys. And by the time he gets to his third read, the, the pass rush is there. Queen and Roquan is fun to watch together, if you ask me. They, they remind me of like two dogs on the same property or same house. And maybe you've ever had to experience this. I have where you have to like walk by that house every day to go to and from school. And in some cases, it might be best for you to just go around the block because you don't want to get up there and find out that the owner left them out again, and now you got to deal with two of them. If it was just one of them, you could run around the truck or jump on a car and get away from them, but it's two of them, and they just leave you no room, no space, and no time to make a good decision. And those two guys, to me, playing next to each other, we, it's a blessing to be able to watch them, number one. Number two, I hope we get to continue to do it in the future. Nowhere was that concept more, more prevalent, more, more on display than this fourth quarter screen to Austin Eckler. Uh, Roquan and, Qu and Queen just, they react so fast. I'll show you the all 22 and the end zone. They both saw something uh, clearly. It's, look, it's, and it's not a good job at all by this tight end to the downside of the screen, but Roquan and Queen, but Queen gets credit for the tackle, by the way. It's a four yard loss. He's the guy that gets credit for the tackle. But Roquan's there as well. If Queen isn't, Roquan is. And the point is, there's just, there's just very little time and very little space afforded to you as a, as a receiver, as a running back, whatever, trying to get something done in an area that they are res responsible for. I don't know what they see. I don't see any communication between them here. This is just reacting in terms of they, maybe Herbert, maybe there's something that Herbert does on most screens that we're not aware of, and they are. He's certainly looking away to our left to Roquan and Queen, Queen's right. It's a nice design from the standpoint of this, this right tackle's pass setting to influence Van Noy to rush, and that's the side where the screen is going to end up. And you can see Eckler's lucky that he just was able to hold on to the ball. Beautiful play by both of those guys. They just react in unison. A couple of perfect run fits here. I'll give you the end zone angle. People have asked for more of that. So my apologies that I didn't do that previously. <clears throat> First and 10 in the third quarter. Now, look, Michael Pierce is going to win to the front side here. He's, he's a dominant run force. Michael Pierce is as good as advertised. He's winning to the front side. He's basically swallowing up this center, dominating that snap. Matabike on the backside isn't getting scooped. You can see his head is still to the play side. I, I don't think it's a great job by Matabike for what we see sometimes. But in any case, Roquan fits perfectly off the back side of it, where the running back, he's basically playing running back on the defense. Where's the hole? Where's the gap? And then, of course, as usual, Michael Pierce is always down near the bottom of the pile. It's only a two-yard game. Next one's first play of the game. Again, end zone angle. 11 personnel. You can see our 4-2 look. I constantly refer to it as a 4-2. Some people refer to it as a 2-4 because Clowney and Van Noy are listed as outside linebackers. Whatever. It doesn't matter. It's four people on the line of scrimmage and two inside backers. And You've got one more gap to deal with, and you have people directly in this screen. And Roquan and Queen have to be able to fit it. That's why the duo concept is so difficult to deal with, not that this is duo. And Roquan on the backside. First play of the game, once again, you got this motion by Eckler that 
is designed to kind of widen him up. Roquan's just always, he's just always calm. He doesn't ever seem to be someone that overreacts to things. And he's often involved in the checks at the line of scrimmage, getting us in the right look, getting other players in the right spot. And then, oh, by the way, when you threaten his area, the screen to Austin Eckler, or these runs to Austin Eckler, he's going to show up. And he's going to be there chest to chest to deal with you if you're a ball carrier or a blocker. He's, a, he's an amazing player, a great pickup, great signing um, last year. Great decision, I should say, by the front office to just go ahead and sign him and keep him. Also gets credit for a forced fumble in the Ravens' drop cover three here. This is a second and seven in the uh, second quarter. You can see that it's empty, so we you know we know that it's a pass play, obviously. And Roquan and Clowney just sandwich Keenan Allen. Roquan gets credit for the tackle. I think they're both involved. This is my point with the statistics. Sometimes you're not targeted. I actually reject the targeted notion as well. Or I think that it's an incomplete indicator of people's uh, pass coverage skills. And we'll get to more on that later. But if you're not targeted at all, you don't get the opportunity to make plays like this. Roquan makes plays whenever people are in his area, and he's fantastic against screens out on the perimeter. His pursuit is amazing. I'm not going to show you six or eight or ten plays from other games this year, but I've been wanting to do a Roquan Smith video for, well, the whole season. I'd like to do one, you know, every week. I wish I had time. All right, early fourth quarter. It's a third and one, I believe. Roquan, as usual, is in the middle of the field. We're bringing four. Rushing the nickel to that side. So Marcus Williams is, is dropping down the nickel as Kyle Hamilton blitzing off the edge. <clears throat> what usually happens when we bring the nickel from the field is we're dropping the defensive end or outside linebacker to the boundary. In this case, Van Noy. Marcus Williams has dropped down. So Roquan is now solely responsible for an area in the middle of the field. Quentin Johnson tries to cross his face. Roquan wraps him a little bit with the left arm around his hip. And then perfect timing on the SWAT down. This is my point with Roquan overall is that not only is he going to arrive at the point of attack where you need him, he's going to arrive where you need him, but he's going to arrive at the precise moment you need him to. It's not just about being in the correct spot. It's about being in the correct spot at the correct time. I would love to listen to him talk about inside linebacker play. At some point, I realize him and Ray, Ray Lewis did that earlier in the season uh, just because the sheer amount of film that I try to watch and video or stuff I try to produce I don't really get the opportunity to watch it but I love the the little hook here down at the bottom side of the screen you can barely see it you guys have a frame in your way and then the timing of getting his hand in there to get the stop on the third and one everything he does if you ask me is damn near perfect uh, he looks like something made out of an AI it's way better in pass coverage than people give him credit for he's way more responsible with with leverage and being on the correct side, understanding the coverage. You gotta you gotta understand this guy this is a guy who, if it's a run play, is gonna be responsible for a gap. Now normally when we're in this this mug look, simulated pressure, whatever you want to call it, it's it's a pass situation. We know it's a pass situation. So, you know, forgive me for that. But this is a guy who fits things perfectly. He's on the inside leverage of the receiver here. So three deep, three under coverage. I'll show you the all 22 one more time. I'm going to try to show you three or four different coverages and all the things he's asked to do once he reads pass. Again, it's a third and 11, so he knows it's a pass play. But three deep, three under. He is running underneath of the inside receiver here, which I think is JSN, just matching his depth and his speed and staying on the inside hip. He's perfect. Like, I don't know what his what his intentions are post-career, but to me, he looks like a guy who'd be an amazing coach. A lot of sacks that we have this year have someone or multiple people who are in passing windows and forcing the quarterback to hold on to the ball a little bit longer than they want to. You can see he's underneath along with Queen. They have a little bit shout, more shallow route on this third and 11. Ends up being a sack by Michael Pierce and forced fumble that we don't recover. But Roquan and Queen and Hamilton, all of those guys, and Arthur Millette as well, are guys that tempo routes perfectly, meaning they're not flying out of there when a route isn't full speed. The previous route I showed you by JSN, he's getting vertical quick, so Roquan's busting out of there. He's also at the, at the line of scrimmage. He's simulating a pressure. Here he's at, at the line of scrimmage as well. He's able to 
go across multiple coverages from play to play very well. And that's something that's not talked about enough from a inside linebacker nickel perspective is how many different coverages they're asked to play and how many different areas of the field they're responsible for on a snap-by-snap basis. And oh, by the way, pre-snap, they have to read run or pass. This is a second and four. This is one that I think illustrates how brilliant he is in terms of leverage and staying and matching routes, I should say. Those guys have to read run or pass first, see pass, get in the area of responsibility, which changes every snap. And that's why I think it's a very short-sighted thing to only look at targets for an inside linebacker or a nickel safety because those guys' paradigm, those guys' responsibility, excuse me, on a, on a play-by-play basis against the pass can change. So you got three vertical by Pickens here, and then I think you got an underneath route by the number one from the other side. Roquan stays on the inside leverage of three, doesn't get a huge piece of him. It's the NFL, so people are going to fuss if, if you touch the receiver seven yards downfield. And then once he lets releases that past him, he understands that's not my responsibility anymore. Let me find some work. It's natural when three goes vertical that you're going to get something under from the opposite side. Sometimes you get one vertical to the other side, but that doesn't make sense. Oftentimes to get one vertical and three vertical, they're basically running into the same area. Roquan, if you ask me, understands past concepts. Those concepts change from week to week, depending on the opponent. I think he's heavily involved in some of our sacks from a coverage standpoint, along with Queen, Hamilton, Millette, or Darius Washington earlier in the season, whoever, the guys responsible for coverage play a role in it. I don't call things coverage sacks because it's never that simple, if you ask me. Additionally, I don't think that <clears throat> rating services do a good job of portraying to the average fan, which, which is what we all are, how good some of these guys are in coverage when he's been asked to blitz or when he's been asked to be used against at the line of scrimmage, he'll be there. I don't think Roquan Smith cares about how many sacks he gets, how many interceptions he gets, or how many passes defensed he gets in a given year. So why should we? When we've needed him to be there around the, around the point of attack as a blitzer, this is the last play I'll show you, He's shown up in a different defense with a different partner. If if the other inside linebacker was more of a, a Mike linebacker, Roquan Smith's athletic enough to play the other linebacker. He is. He's athletic enough to cover the running backs like Patrick Queen does. Last comment on the whole target thing is when I went on my uh, little rant there about targets, um, I don't even look at those things, to be honest with you. Other people base their entire evaluation. I'm not talking about Ravens content creators at all. I'm talking about people on social media who don't watch the film. Base their entire evaluation of someone's coverage skills on targets. How many times they've been targeted and how many catches they've given up. It's a very short-sighted thing, if you ask me. I showed you, I think, three coverage plays of Roquan Smith fitting things perfectly in three different coverages that he's responsible for. And the last of which, the one against the Steelers, was a second and four. Very easily could have been a run play on a second and four. When it's third and 11, you kind of have an advantage defensively. You know it's pass. Roquan Smith is a guy that I think we'll look back at in the same vein as Ray Lewis in some ways. We've got to get a Super Bowl win, clearly, for him to be in that category or even be close to it. But the level of play that he's given us against the run, against the pass, on a week-by-week basis, I think is extremely high, number one. And number two, it goes beyond only having eight tackles, one pass defense, and one forced fumble in a particular game. I thought he played brilliant against the Chargers. Uh, He's involved in the play where Herbert scrambles uh, uh, as well and possibly could have been a penalty on Geno Stone. But you guys let me know what you think of the plays that I chose from, from week 12 to illustrate how well I think he played, even though he had only eight tackles. And then uh, how balanced and versatile I believe he is in zone coverage, particularly against the pass. Appreciate you guys' time. If you think other Ravens fans would enjoy this content, this film study look at Roquan Smith, how he played this past week in the win against the Chargers, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.